This is Michael Popak with the Legal AF Hot Take. Ever heard of Paxum Bank in the Dominica? Well, when they're not raising most of their money processing uh, payments related to pornography and adult sex workers, yeah, that's what they do, they lent at a critical moment in time over $8 million to Trump and the Trump Media and Technology Group, uh, which owns Truth Social. They needed that $8 million because the SEC had stopped the, the uh, uh, closing of the transaction between the blank check company that wanted to take Trump public and his entity. And for that year and a half or two years of being stretched out, the company was making no money. It was down to about 4 or $5 million cash in its bank account. So they needed a cash infusion. And who came to the rescue? Uh, very simply, uh, Anton uh, Postalnikov. Anton Postalnikov is a Russian-American or Russian business person living in South Florida. He owns Paxson Bank, which makes all the money from the pornography and sex worker payments. So he had some money to spare and he invested it in Donald Trump. You know, that person that his uh, Trump uh, lawyers keep calling the leading candidate for the presidency, right? Porn dollars invested in Trump media to prop it up in return for uh, the ability for these lenders like Anton Postalnikov to convert his $8 million investment into shares of the company when it went public at $20 a, a, a share price, which is known as the strike price. Now the shares are trading at about $40, meaning that Alex Postalnikov has doubled his money in Paxson Bank, has a new source of revenue other than pornography and sex worker transactions. Because now their stake is worth probably about $16 million. I mean, there's a long line of other shady investors, mainly Trump supporters, that have put their money into Trump media as a loan with the ability to convert that loan into shares of stock. But the most fascinating and shadiest of them potentially is that of Anton Postalnikov and his ownership of Paxson Bank, who made that link. You think Joe Biden would take a loan from a bank in Dominica in the Caribbean that makes its money in the pornography industry? I know that the Republicans are all hot and bothered trying to find a, a, uh, a way to impeach Joe Biden for his son making legitimate money on a board in Ukraine and paying back his father certain loans. But how come there's no similar outcry by the Republicans when the leading candidate for their party took a lifeline loan when he was on the balls of his ass and needed the money for his Trump social media company to prop it up, and he took it from Anton Postalnikov. Now, there's another link that's been explored going back to The Guardian last year between Anton Postalnikov and his a, a relative of his, Alex Smirnov. Alex Smirnov, not to be confused with the guy that's uh, looking at, uh, who's been indicted for having turned on Hunter Biden uh, and had been and given false statements and information to the FBI about a bribery scheme involving Joe Biden and Hunter Biden. Not that Smirnoff family. It's a very common last name. Um, I should know. Look up my last name. It's not that common, but it does come from that region. So Alex Smirnoff um, is the is has been for long periods of time in the Putin administration a close advisor to Putin. I'm going to connect the dots here in a minute, but I think you see where this is going. So Alexander Smirnoff, who has been the deputy head of the seaports very important, the ports of uh, and the docks of Russia through a company there that's owned and controlled ultimately by Putin, for which Putin has lined his pockets, called Rossmore Port, the head of, or the deputy head of Rossmore Port. When he wasn't the deputy head of Rossmore Port, Alex Smirnov, the relative of Anton Postalnikov, served in the office, the executive office of President Putin, right? So what do you have? You got a relative of Smirnov, Postalnikov, that owns a bank in Dominica that's making its money primarily in the porn and sex worker uh, 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 transaction or processing of those transactions. And then that money is generated and $8 million is invested in Trump media. And Trump media then uses it to prop up its um, finances as approved by, and this is according to the Guardian reporting, Don Jr. and Alan Weisselberg, now the disgraced twice convicted uh, former chief financial officer for Donald Trump. They took in that money. They didn't give it back because they needed it. Now, that loan may or may not have been arranged by the SPAC sponsor, the special purpose acquisition company that took Donald Trump public or his company public, Digital World Media. But in any event, the money got approved by Don Jr. It got taken into the bank accounts of Trump Media and, and it was used in return 
uh, it, for what's called a convertible note. Uh, Postalnikov, who heads Paxson Bank, had the ability to flip this into equity and take instead uh, 400,000 shares approximately of equity, which now at the current trading value, although substantially reduced from the first trading day, is worth about 16 million. So he doubled his money. And what did he get in return? What did he get in return? Look, I've done many a hot take already on the Midas Touch and Legal AF Network about this presidential candidate being tremendously financially compromised, which is a national security risk. It's not just Achilles heels for Donald Trump. It is a financial vulnerability that makes him vulnerable, vulnerable to bribery scandals and influence by foreign powers and to be turned into a foreign asset. This isn't the Russian interference. This is the truth. You don't send a person to the White House who could sell out America to save his own financial hide. And that's what we're watching with Donald Trump. The first presidential candidate in recorded history that has literally put himself up for sale, has told the world that he's financially destitute effectively, given all of the criminal cases against him, the $10 million a month of uh, legal fees, the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars of judgments against him, and looking down the barrel of uh, losing his liberty because he'll be convicted of crimes. We've never had somebody who's so financially compromised uh, that he has to sell himself off to the highest bidder, having told the world that he needs the money, that he's gone bankrupt in the past and it could happen again in the future, that he's literally selling himself or a piece of himself on a stock market where anyone can invest, foreign or domestic, right? Friends or enemies of the United States. And what do they want in return? What is the quid pro quo? We know the quid, we know the money. What's the quo? What are they getting in return? What is... Anton Pastolnikov getting in return. I know he, how he makes his money, but how is he getting a return on his investment in ROI from Donald Trump in this smoky back room, uh, smoky, smoke filled back room deal that he made to become a primary investor in prop up Trump media? What is he getting in return? Is it going to be policy changes if Donald Trump gets elected? Is it going to be somebody in his family being given a pardon or clemency? Is it going to be that he's going to change Donald Trump FCC policy or banking regulatory policy to get uh, regulators and investigators off of Paxson Bank's backside as they're investigating it and, and Donald Trump or were as of last year for potential money laundering? Again, we're sending a potential money launderer to the White House at least under this analysis that I've just laid out as reported in the in the Guardian and in the New York Times. Now, the um the report from the Guardian is that in March of last year in 2023 there was already the beginning of a federal inquiry into whether money laundering is going on by the 8 million dollars coming out of Paxson Bank adult pornography transaction payments to Donald Trump. I almost can't get this statement out without both cringing and laughing, and then the money being used to prop up the media company until it went public. And it'd be one thing if Donald Trump wasn't running to be the leader of the free world, to be the, to have the honor of being our president of the United States under our constitutional republic. If he was just citizen uh, businessman Donald Trump, you know, then regulators and investigators and the court system will deal with Donald Trump in their own time as they are now. But when you're running for office to be the president of the United States, the commander in chief, you can't do so with clay feet. You can't do so when you're financially exposed and, and, and the potential for corruption, right? You don't bribe an honest man. You don't bribe a man whose financial affairs are in order. You bribe somebody who has a weakness, who has an Achilles heel, uh, uh, an Achilles heel, who has a sweet tooth for other people's money and to bail himself out, which he learned in the real estate business and from his father. And so look, um, do I know for a fact, based on the reporting that we've all seen, that we've investigated, that Anton, Anton Postolnikov and Paxson Bank has committed money laundering? No, that's what the federal investigation is all about that I'm talking about here. But I can give you the data points that are, that are um, uncontroverted and irrefutable and immutable. And, and no one has denied it, including Anton Postolnikov. He and his Paxson Bank bailed out Donald Trump and gave him $8 million that the Paxson Bank made primarily from porn and sex worker transactions. And then he is now, as a result, Postolnikov and Paxson Bank, a major shareholder in Trump Truth Social. And then we can make 
the logical induction, inductive reasoning and deductive reasoning about what they got in return for propping up and saving Donald Trump's bacon at a critical moment when his company was about to go under before he had a chance to go public and make all the money from a public filing. That's what we do here on Legal AF on the Midas Touch Network. Deep dives and analysis by lawyers who sit at that intersection of law and politics and give you the benefit of their experience and judgment and analysis. We do it one place on the Midas Touch Network on this YouTube channel. You can free subscribe and help them get to 3 million free subscribers before uh, the November election. That helps. You're helping to build this network. There's no outside investors. We are the network. You there, me here, and the other contributors in the Midas Touch Network. And then you can follow us on Legal AF if you like this kind of reporting. I do it on Saturdays with Ben Micellis, co-founder with me of Legal AF, and he's also the co-founder of the Midas Touch Network. I do it on Wednesdays with Karen Friedman Agnifilo, a friend, a colleague, and a former uh, state prosecutor with the Manhattan DA's office. And then we do it on hot takes like this one. And we take Legal AF where we curate the top five stories at the intersection, those legal developments at the intersection of law and politics. Um, and we do it on that podcast and then on audio podcast platforms of your choice. And if you don't know what Legal AF means, you can join us and find out. <laughs> and if you like what I'm doing here as a, as a main contributor here for Midas Touch Network and Legal AF, you can leave a comment. And I'll I'll talk back. We'll have a conversation. We'll have a dialogue. Uh, or you can um, give a thumbs up. That helps too. It tells the algorithmic gods you like this kind of content. You want it coming to you. So until my next hot take, until my next Legal AF, this is Michael Popak reporting. Heary, heary. Legal AF Law Breakdown is now in session. Go beyond the headlines and get a deep dive into the important legal concepts you need to know and we discuss every day on Legal AF. Exclusive content you won't find anywhere else, all for the price of a couple of cups of coffee. Join us at patreon.com slash legal AF. That's patreon.com slash legal AF.